Hi students, this is Robin Peter talking on the topic 90 plus is yours. Every student want to get 90 plus in the board examination. The question is how? What is the technique? I am here to tell you the techniques of how to get 90 plus in social science subject. Without wasting much time, let me come to the point, the first point. Know the exam pattern. So you know that there are five sections are there in social science question paper. Section A, Section B, Section C, Section D and Section E. So Section A, let, let us see what is Section A. Section A is objective type question. Objective type question, it includes eight types of questions, eight types of questions. The first one MCQ, fill in the blanks, match the following, identify, define, one word answer, data analysis, assertion and reason. So these three identify data analysis, assertion and reason. These are new pattern of exam. Identify. Example is there will be three identification will be given. You have to say what the thing it is. For example, identify the soil. So there will be three identification for the soil will be given in the question. You have to identify the soil. Next one, data analysis. So data analysis, this is a question from economics. Data analysis means, for example, per capita income of some country will be given. So you have to analyze the data according to the question. Next one, assertion and reason. A and R are right, and R is the correct explanation of A. A and R are right, and R is not the correct explanation of A. A is right, R is wrong. R is right, A is wrong. These are the options. So most probably 90% the answer will be option A. Both A and R are right, and R is the correct explanation of A. So we will move to the second section, that is section B. Section B is short answer type questions. So short answer type question. So that consists question number 17 to 22 of three marks. There will be six question and two internal choice or there will be six question and two internal choice. The total mark is 18. You have to write this answer not more than 18 words. So remember, not more than 18 words. I will give you example of how to write the answers. The sample of question paper, the answer sheet I will show you later on. So these questions will be from all the four books. History, Civics, Economics and Geography. So we will move to Section C. Section C is a new pattern. Last year it was introduced by the CBSC. That is source-based questions. Source-based question. Source-based question means you have the experience of writing seen and unseen passage of English. So it is the same experience. There will be passages from, one from history, one from civics, one from economics, one from geography. You have to find the right option from the passage. That will be, it, it will be MCQ. So you have to find the right options. Question number 23 to 26. So it consists of four mark to four into four, 16 mark, total 16 mark. So it will be totally MCQ questions. The problem is that don't think that it is very easy. The direct answer may not be there in the passage. You have to find the answers 
from your understanding of the chapter. So four options will be there. So immediately you will come to know that. If you have the understanding of the chapter, which is the right option, the answer may not be given directly in the passage. So this you have to be very careful. You can easily score 16 marks, but you have to be little careful. Fine. Now moving to section. Next section, section D. So section D is long answer type question. Long answer type question. Question number 27 to 31. So it consists of 5 mark. So 5 into 5, 25 marks total. You have to write this answer not more than 120 words. So you have to write the answers in points. If points are not available, you can write in small paragraph. So I will show you one example. This is, this is an example from section A. That is objective type question. Which of the following countries did not attend the Congress of Vienna? Option A, Britain. Option B, Russia. Option C, Prussia. Option D, Switzerland. So you know the answer is option D, Switzerland. So how will you write the answer? You will write the answer. This is question number. If it is question number one, you will write one there. Then you have to write the if it is option D, you will write D here and you will write the answer. Remember, suppose it is a filling the blanks and you do not know the spelling of Switzerland. Okay, your Z went here, your L went here. According to the norms of CBSC checking, if the teacher can read this as Switzerland, the teacher has to give full mark in this MCQs or fill in the blanks, any objective type question. Next one, we shall go to section D. This is the long answer type question. Section D, an example of question. What are the favorable condition? Favorable condition for the growth of an industry. What are the favorable condition for the growth of an industry? So this is the question. So how will you write the long answer? First of all, you have to create a heading. So you will create the heading from the question. See the question very carefully. Favorable condition for the growth of industry. Leave the question mark. So this will be your heading. So this is your heading. So we have an sample paper, answer sheet of a student who scored full mark in this answer. So the student has written, see, after the heading, you have written the heading. So you will write the point, first point, availability of iron ore. Then you will leave one line. So it is better to leave one line here, then you will write from here. You will write the explanation in four or five lines. That's enough. Then again, leave one line. You will write the next subheading. Again, you will explain in two, three lines. Again, you will leave line. Then the third point. Then the fourth point, then the fifth point. Long answer, five marks. At least you have to write five points and you have to explain those points. It should be very systematic. Don't write in a shabby way, in a congested way. Leave space, see the space. Looking very beautiful. If any examiner is second this, he or she will be very happy and she or he will give you full mark, five out of five, if you are writing like this. Suppose in every, in every question, there won't be subheadings or points. 
If you don't get subheadings or points, you can write in short paragraph. Make it short paragraph. Okay, give their star or one, two, three or A, B, C, D. Anything you can write. Make it small paragraph. So that will be better. Don't write anything in one paragraph. Divide the paragraph according to the concept. I will show you an example, something very unique for you. Suppose this is your answer sheet. So what do you do normally? You start writing the, answer, the answers, the heading and the subheading and the explanation. Don't do that. If you are doing so, what will happen? You may forget the main points to write. So for that, what you, will, what you will do? You will do rough work. You may be thinking, rough work in social science. Yes, you have to do rough work in social science. Take last three pages. Write here with your pen or pencil, rough work. So first you will write the points, the subheadings, with pencil. Then you will check whether the points are right. Any points you have to remove, any points you have to add. So you might have written 10 points. Out of that, you may select six points, the best six points. And you will start writing here in the fair. So this is a technique. So your answer will be perfect. You will get the perfect answer. So this you don't forget. This is a technique. I have seen students writing English essays with pencil. Okay, they will write with pencil. After that, what they will do? They will read it. Wherever there is mistake, grammatical mistake is there. Wherever some corrections are there, they will rub it and they will write again. Then they will write on the pencil writing with pen. pen. So the essay will be a perfect essay. You cannot even find a single mistake from this essay. If you are writing with pen directly, what will happen? You will make a lot of mistakes. So in order to avoid mistakes, do rough work. That is better. Okay, fine. Moving ahead. We have section E. So section E is map question. So map question, there will be map from history, there will be map from geography. So you know the chapter of map from history, that is nationalism in India. It can be of two mark or it can be of three mark. Three questions, three mark. Again, there are six maps in the syllabus. You have to do only the map from the syllabus. Don't do unnecessary maps. Don't learn. So six maps are there in the syllabus. Three will be asked from different, different chapters. So don't think that it will be asked from the same chapter. There are six chapters are there. Three questions will be asked from any three chapters. So we will go for that is 32.1 and 32.2 32 to consist of five or six mark. Last year it was five because there was only two marks from history. This year we have three plus three, six mark in map question. So this is the syllabus of map you can see here. So there is a technique to label the place in the map. Suppose, so you have nationalism India. This is a map question in the National Congress section. Calcutta, Nagpur, Madras. Then important centers of Indian national movement. Chambaran, Kheda, Ahmedabad, Amitsar, Chauri Chaura, Dandi. Suppose the question is regarding Dandi, 
where did mahatma gandhi start his non cooperation movement so you know the answer is dandi so in order to know the map you should know the states and the main places you should be familiar with the states where is gujarat this is gujarat so you should be familiar with the state so you know dandi is in the south of gujarat so you will put a dot there i will you will put a arrow and you will write dandi okay so if you want you can write this you will disobey in moment even if you are not writing it's okay suppose you are marking on the north of gujarat and you are writing here dandi that will be wrong so always be safe if you do not know the place whether it is in the north or south you can even mark in the center so the teacher may give you half mark the full mark won't be cut off so this is a technique so you will better to point or label the place where it is if dandi is in south of gujarat you will put a dot here and you put an arrow and you will write the answer dandi fine okay fine so we are moving to map syllabus again geography there are six chapters are there chapter 1 resource and development what will come from here major soil types chapter 3 water resource the example is dams next one chapter 4 agriculture largest major producer states of sugar cane tea coffee rubber cotton and jute chapter 5 minerals and energy resources the example iron ore mines chapter 6 manufacturing industries example is software technology parks chapter 7 lifelines of national economy example major ports the question may be locating and labeling suppose the question is from chapter 3 water resource regarding dams locate rana pradap sagar dam so you know the rana pradap sagar dam is in rajasthan that is also in the south of rajasthan so either you can put a dot here point here and you can write the name or you can put an ro dot and ro and you can write the name here rana pradap sagar dam so this is the map syllabus so map map consists of five or six mark so it is easy to score this five to six mark now this is the blueprint let's be familiar with the blueprint so the blueprint remembering it consists of 29 percentage of marks next one understanding it consists of 25 percentage of marks next one is applying it consists of 20 percentage of marks next one is analyzing and evaluating it consists of 12 percentage of marks the last one is creating it consists of 6.5 percentage of map marks and the map skill it consists of 7.6 percentage of marks total 100 percentage total marks 80 it means in the coming future if you have only the textual knowledge the mugging up knowledge the remembrance you won't get good marks in social science you may get this 29 percentage in order to get good marks you have to have the understanding applying analyzing evaluating creating skills so what you have to do to have all this skills you have to improve your english you have to improve your writing skill you have to improve your vocabulary that is the only thing you can do fine so let's see about the project work so as the cbse says there are three projects are there 
the students can take consumer awareness, social issues, sustainable development. So these are the three projects you can take up. So you have already a chapter named consumer awareness. You have the chapter. So better to take this subject, this topic as project, consumer awareness. So you can see the project consists of five marks, content, accuracy, originality, and analysis, two marks, presentation and creativity, two marks, Viva voice, one mark. So according to the CPSC, how the project should be? Project should be eco-friendly without including too much expenses. The expenses must be minimum. Next one, the project should be handwritten by the student. It's a must to handwritten. Yes, of course you can include many pictures, the relevant pictures. You can have the first page, I will show you an example of a project. So this is an example of a project. This is the first page. This is made by our students last year. Okay, beautifully decorated. We can have your artist, artistic sense. The next page, it will be certificate. The name of the teacher, subject teacher, and the name of the student. Certificate. Next page, acknowledgement, thanking everybody. Again, you have to write your name, your signature, and your standard, and the date. Next one, index. You have to write all the index. Then you will start the topics of projects, different topics with the relevant pictures. See, this is a three sides paper. So write only in one part, you can paste pictures the other part. The last one, it will be bibliography. The last page is bibliography. So this is how you can make a beautiful projects. Next one, internal assessment. So internal assessment, you get 20 marks. Five marks for pen paper test. That is your periodic test, half yearly examination, and the pre-boards. Next one, five mark, that is your activities, maybe the cues, debate, role play, viva, group discussion, drama, interactive, bulletin boards, gallery work, all this can be. Next five mark, it is for portfolio. Portfolio, the example I will show you in the next slide, how it can be made. So it can be an any exemplary work done by the student, reflections, narrations, journals, achievement of the student throughout the year, participation of the student in different activities like Heritage India Qs. And the Next one is five mark, that is project work. We already have seen. Now we will see an example of digital portfolio. How we can make digital portfolio. So portfolio can be made in the file format, just like what we have done in the project. Second one, you can have the folders. You can keep all the document in a folder. The third one, you can have digital portfolio. Okay, all the descriptions you can see my portfolio about me, your likes, dislikes, my goal, activities, the photograph you can include, strength and weakness, my achievement you can Include all the certificate, whichever you got during the year. 
during the academic year. So beautifully done. So you can even write your articles. The teachers may give you some articles, maybe some topic. So she has written on effect of COVID-19 on Indian students. You can see here, impact on election. Politician affected with COVID-19. Okay, next one from history. You can see. See, with the relevant pictures, this one is of Hindi. Fine. So, that is, that is all about portfolio. Now, the actual subject is coming here, the topic. Tips to score 90 plus. The first point is no excuse. Fix your timetable. So students, you go to school, you come back to come back from school. Again, you will may go to tuitions. Your studies are over there. No. You should have a fixed timetable your personal study timetable. You can write the timetable and you can fix in your bedroom, in your study room, it should be fixed. So that whenever you go here and there, you should have a look at the timetable. It will remind you of studies. Yes, I have to study. Second one, know your syllabus. We already have discussed the syllabus. So no need of discussing the syllabus again. Before starting your studies, you should know the syllabus, which are the deleted chapter. Don't study what is unnecessary things. The syllabus of map, don't study unnecessary map. So you should know the syllabus. The syllabus is available in the website of CBSC. You can have a look at self-study. NCRT book, especially you have to have self-study. So your school is over, your tuition is over, you get refreshed and you have to have four hours daily self-study, four hours at least. Self-study and self-study you have to concentrate on NCRT books. Next one, maintain separate notebook for short notes. You already have the notebook. Apart from that, you should have a, another notebook only to write short notes of all the subject in a single book. So when you, before the exam, when you revise the topic, it will be easy for you to remember. Write in small short notes. Highlight important topics. So when you have the self-study, wherever you feel the topic is important or your teacher might have told this is important. So you have to highlight important topics. You can, you can highlight with a highlighter or you can even underline with a pencil. You can do as you like. Next one. Focus on quality than quantity. Focus on quality. Some students I have seen, they sit in the study table for long hours, maybe nine hours, 10 hours. But after the examination, the result is zero. The parents complain, why my child is like this? Because he is not Concentrating on quality, only quantity. He is simply sitting. The mind is somewhere else. The mind is roaming. What mommy is cooking? Whether I have received some message in the mobile. So, so many things are moving around. 
So no concentration. Without concentration, if you are studying for a long time also, the result won't come. So focus on quality. If you are sitting and studying for nine hours, if you study with quality, you have to spend only four hours. Next one, use downtime wisely. What is downtime? Suppose you are studying for four hours. After one hour, you will take a break for 10 minutes. That is called downtime. What usually the students, they do? They go and watch TV or they will just look at the mobile. Avoid all the screens, even your mobile, your TV, your computer, avoid it. So use your downtime wisely. You can speak with your parents. You can have some chess play that will boost your memory. Next one, visualize success. Have a great dream. You just dream you're going to get 90 plus. So dreaming, anybody can dream. What you dream that you become. Don't evaluate past examination. Suppose you did not get any good marks in your half yearly examination, pre-board examination. Don't worry. Forget your past. You have to forget your past and look for the future. The future will be brighter. Solve maximum sample papers. Many sample papers are available in the net. I will show you so many applications where you will get the sample papers. Solve maximum sample paper with timing. Students may think that I can write the examination on the day of exam. That is a great mistake you are doing. Before writing the examination, you have to practice at home with time limit. Suppose the exam is of three hours. So you have to limit yourself with three hours. So section B and section D, you have to be careful. So it consists of section B, that is short answer type question, that should not exceed 80 words. And long answer, it should not exceed 120 words. So 120 words and 80 words, how much it consists of? In the answer sheet, you have to practice first. There in the exam hall, you are not going to, you are not going to count the words, but you should know how much is my 120 words. So practice. So practice and practice that makes a man perfect. Next one, make effective use of exam break. Suppose your English examination is first. After the English examination, for Hindi, you get five days. So all these five days, you have to concentrate only on the subject Hindi. So don't go for plays. Don't go for any function. Don't enjoy. Concentrate only on studies during your break, exam break. That is very important. Okay, you have entered the exam hall. You will get the question paper. So read the question paper twice. It will be written in Hindi also. If you don't understand English, please write in. Please read in Hindi also. Next one, break up your question papers. Break up your question paper. For example, there are five sections are there. So five sections, you have to break the timing. All the objective type question, you have to give only 30 minutes. Short answer, 90 minutes. Long answer, 120 minutes. Map, 5 minutes. Finish your examination before 15 minutes. And don't take rest. You have to check whether I have written all the answers. Whether the question numbers are right. Whether I have left out something. Everything you have to check during this 15 minutes. If you have not 
underline your headings, your points. Use this time for underlining. This is very important. Make your examiner happy. So how can you make the examiner happy? Those who are checking your answer sheet, follow the pattern of the question paper. Some students are there, half they will write from section A, then they will go to section B, then section E, then section D. Don't make the examiner confused. That will reduce your mark. So making happy, you have to write in a very neat and tidy handwriting. This is very important. Very neat and tidy handwriting, you have to write the examination. The last one is hope for the best. So you have, if you have done everything well, you can hope the best. 90 plus is yours, no doubt. So I am giving you some study application, the sample of study application. The best one, first of all, I would say my CBSE guide. A to Z you will get from this application. Your sample paper, your short notes, the videos, the NCRT solutions. So these are the samples, even the merit nation. This is also very good. So you can download, you can use it. It is totally free. So let me conclude my video with the beautiful golden words for students. I hear, I forget. I see, I remember. I do, I understand. So practice yourself. Train yourself. 90 plus will be yours. Wish you all the best for your examination. Wish you all the success in your life. Thank you very much.